Everybody, welcome to System Cutters Live. I'm David Wilson, and uh, today we're back with another live stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever interesting topic I've come up with for the week. And uh, this week we're going to be talking about uh, Geeks Home and Rational Emacs, which might be interesting. We're going to try to do a little bit of live coding and see how things go. Um, before we get started with that, uh, updates. So, um, oh, let me say hello to the people who are here so far. Daiko, uh, excuse me, I'm apparently having uh, a, a seizure and I can't speak right now. Um, hello to the Daigo and Gan. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my mouth right now, but uh, yeah, this is where we're at. So uh, I'm still thinking about what I want to do for the next uh, System Crafters video. If you've got a particular request, let me know either in the live chat or in the comments. I've got a few things in mind, but uh, uh, things are busy right now and I'm not particularly motivated for any particular mm, video. So, um, uh, if people are sort of hot on a particular topic, let me know and I'll be interested to find out about that so I can consider doing a video on it soon. I don't know if I'll have a video out next week, um, but probably within the next two weeks I'll have one out. Hello also to Michael and to Jacob. Thanks for, thanks for joining today. So, um, today... What we're going to try to do is uh, combine two areas that are inter interesting to me. One is configuring Emacs, obviously. Hello to Marcos. And the other would be uh, managing your .files configuration with Geeks Home. And we've talked about Geeks Home a few times on the channel. Um, I haven't really done any videos on it yet because I wanted to still continue polishing my own configuration, which I haven't had a, little, had, haven't had a lot of time to do recently uh, before I started making a video on that. But I am very motivated to... Uh, to do that this year. Um, uh, hello to Karthik and, and uh, well, I already said hello to Gun. Gun, Gun asked, did I push last week's config.el to GitHub? I actually have it in the show notes from last week's stream. So if you check that out, you can see it there. Um, so where was I? Uh, oh yeah, Geeks Home videos. Uh, actually, an announcement I forgot to make here is that um, I'll be speaking at the Geeks birthday event let's see geeks birthday event did i say this already i can't remember if i if i mentioned this but um i don't know that, the, that they have a, a program up yet let's see birthday event i was supposed to send them something today and i forgot um <laughs> but i think i'm actually gonna have uh two one or two talks there one of them will be about geeks home i think um but yeah check out this blog post I think I mentioned it was happening. I don't know if I mentioned I was speaking at it, but I, I'm definitely going to be speaking at it. It's in uh, it's in Paris. I don't know if you can get to Paris, but uh, I'll be going there. It's in um, September on the 16th to 18th. It'll, there's like a Friday through Sunday. I'll be speaking on Saturday, I think. So um, that should be a lot of fun. I'm inter interested to see uh, you know how many people show up to that and also to meet some people in person who work on Geeks and maybe even some people from the System Crafters community would be there. So I'll be, uh, yeah, doing a couple of talks. Like I said, I once I get them confirmed, I'll say more about what they're going to be. I think because um, I'm still sort of working on the proposals. Uh, hello to Anton, Mitch, and uh, Ionut. I guess that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, anyway, had to get that in there. So uh, back to the topic at hand. I know it's a little bit disorganized today. Apologies for that. So what we're going to try to do is take Rational Emacs and try to configure it, or at least can configure an Emacs setup with Rational Emacs using Geeks Home. Um, 
it's not as straightforward as it might sound because there's some things that need to be done in Geeks Home to enable this, but I'm gonna talk about what those will be. Uh, but I guess before doing that, the, the question of that might be more interesting to answer is why? Why would I bother doing this? Well, uh, one of my goals with creating Rational Home, no, Rational Emacs, you can see how fast I put this together today, uh, was to make a base Emacs configuration that could be both used both with and without Geeks. Um, obviously, the mainstream use case for Rational Emacs would be just, you know, using it the quote unquote normal way where you don't we don't use geeks or anything else like that to manage your configuration. You just clone the repository, make it your main uh, .emacs.d folder, and then have your Rational Emacs configuration file that you then use to configure um, Emacs and load in Rational Emacs modules, etc. Um, however, there's another way that we could approach setting up Rational Emacs, and that's, that is by using Geeks Home, uh, which allows you to uh, clone the Rational Emacs repository automatically, and then um, write out your configuration files from Geeks Home so that uh, you have a consistent setup between multiple machines. Um, so there are some interesting implications in doing this. One of them is it's potentially easier to configure Rational Emacs. And when I say easier, I mean like you don't have to bother with cloning the repository and putting it in the right place. Geeks Home will take care of that for you in theory. Um, but you just include some extra code, some extra config, extra code in your Geeks Home config, and that will take care of uh, setting up your Rational Emacs configuration. Um, you, you can also use the functionality of Geeks to uh, easily roll back to a previous working version of the package. So, or sorry, of the of the Rational Emacs distribution, I suppose you could say, uh, because everything is done based on um, git commits. You basically pull a particular git commit of Rational Emacs and put it on your system and then use that. Well, if you have a problem with it, it's easy to just like roll back your uh, Geeks Home generation to a previous generation if anything goes wrong. If you want to sort of diagnose what the problems are, um, that could be a solution to problems you sometimes have when you update packages or maybe for depend on depending on a distribution like you know, Doom Emacs, etc. That breaks something. It's easy to get back to a working state um, for your your system. Uh, you could also customize aspects of your Emacs config across different machines at the Geek Slayer, and by that I mean things like uh, faces or specific, more specifically, face sizes. Like if you have, you know, two or three machines, all of them have maybe different screen DPIs or screen resolutions, like I do, and you want to make sure that your fonts are all set to different sizes on those, those machines. This is one thing that could take care of that. Now, obviously, you could do that in Emacs, uh, Emacs Lisp as well, uh, but this is a sort of a way to just take that one level above and use uh, Geeks to, to handle that. Uh, the theme that gets set, uh, which Rational Emacs modules get loaded on that machine, etc. Um, as I'm saying this, I realize that it may sound a little bit ridiculous to do that, but you know, th there are reasons why a person might be interested to do that, even if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're watching this channel, you're probably the type of person who likes tinkering, so uh, you might be interested just to see how how that might work. Um, also, another interesting thing is that you could even containerize your Emacs dev environment configurations, and by that I mean. If you have a configuration for Geeks Home set up for Rational Emacs with a specific set of packages pulled in, or um, like maybe you're, you're setting up for a particular development workflow, like maybe for closure development or some other type of development, and you wanna set up a specific containerized environment for a particular project, you could do that with Geeks Home and some of the things that I'm thinking about uh, doing in this stream. So it's kind of an interesting, way to um, have sort of like single purpose Emacs configs that use Rational Emacs, or it could even be your own. You could take this idea and just apply it to a normal Emacs configuration. Um, I, I mentioned some of this in the stream I did a few weeks ago. I don't know how long ago that was, uh, talking about why our strategies for like a modular Emacs config, this is sort of where I've been thinking along those lines. If you have something like Geeks Home or Geeks Shell, you could potentially um, containerize your configuration, or at least make it easy to stand up that so that, so that someone else could even set up the same configuration for editing a particular project. If you wanted to share your entire dev config with someone else, it'd be interesting. Um, there are also possible downsides to doing this. I'm sure that people who have used Geeks uh, could think of a few. Um, we can discuss those later, but I'm just going to skip ahead from for now and just focus on trying to make it work, and then we can talk about downsides if we, if you want to. 
Um, and I, I did see that uh, Andrew Tropin, who was the person who created Geeks Home, uh, had a video recently about using Geeks to manage an Emacs configuration, specifically around how you um, install packages from different sources. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did skip ahead to the part toward the end where he starts talking about an interesting way to manage your Emacs configuration using Geeks Home. So definitely check out this video or go straight to Andrew Tropin's uh, uh, YouTube channel and uh, take a look at that. Um, it's a pretty interesting uh, video. And I think he has a lot of the same ideas that I do about how one might go about this. I think uh, you know some of that is also done in his RDE channel for Geeks. So if you know anything about RDE, you could probably go take a look at what he's doing there and uh, and take a and sort of see how this might work in a more fleshed out uh, configuration. Hello to uh, Ronnie and Fade and Mark Owen. Thanks for being here. So. How are we going to do this? Well, I'm not entirely sure yet because I'm still not an expert on Geeks Home. Um, but here's what we're going to try to do. We're all going to try to figure it out together. Uh, so I, I'm certainly interested in anybody's uh, comments as we go through this. Uh, first of all, we're going to create a Geeks package to install Rational Emacs from GitHub. That part is pretty straightforward. But um, because this is not a program that gets compiled, it's more like a, a repo that gets cloned. Um, I may need to look into how you can just do a very simple package installation that doesn't require any extra steps. I think I know how to do that, but we're gonna have to, to look into the Geeks code a little bit. Um, also, uh, we will create a Geeks home service, which, re which places Rational Emacs in the normal Emacs configuration path, uh, the .emacs.de folder or .config slash Emacs. Um, we're gonna see if that works. Um, I have an idea about how that might work, but we're gonna find out really, really quickly if it, if it works or not. Um, also, we're going to try to add configuration parameters to the home service that we create to um, to create Rational Emacs configuration files in the .config slash Rational Emacs folder because that's where those things go. So we'll try to um, uh, to set something for that up. It, it'll be very bare bones though because we may not have enough time to do all that. And then finally, uh, we're going to test all this out using the Geeks Home container command. And if you haven't used Geeks Home before, this is actually a pretty cool feature of it where... Um, you can start up a container for your Geeks Home configuration just to test it out and see where files get placed. It's very, very helpful for diagnosing issues while you're trying to set up a Geeks Home configuration. Um, basically, just sets up a fake home folder where you can see um, what your config will look like in practice. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely be using that to try everything out. And the good thing is that we can actually run Emacs from that fake environment and um, be able to test out the configuration as we go. I think that will work. We're going to find out in a moment whether it works or not. All right, so that's all the, the speaking I had to do. So let's actually see if we can give this a shot and uh, see see how far we get with it. So let's see. Um, where am I going to start? Projects, code, uh, rational, uh, geeks. Let's just call it that for now. And then um, home.scm. So we'll just start up something basic. I'm gonna go grab my own Geeks Home config, or at least you know pieces of that. Let's see, David will packages. Now I might steal a little bit of stuff here just as a way to get started. Let me go back into the Rational Geeks folder. Um, so packages slash. Uh, rational.scm. I don't know if that's the right way to call this, but we're just going to start with that. And um, define public. I'll just replace this with rational emacs. And for version 0 0.1, doesn't really matter. In fact, we probably need to um, use a commit hash for part of that. We're going to change the package name, rational emacs. We'll also change this as well so rational geeks packages rational i know it's starting to get a little bit redundant huh okay so geeks download geeks packages geeks build system so let me see how am i going to do this do i have the geeks code base on here no i do not so i don't know how long it's going to take to sync that but maybe i can do it let me jump into a shell and then i'm going to go back down to the code folder and let's see, uh, geeks, savannah, git. 
me to grab the link to the repository right here. And this is the C git. I want to get the actual, there's a link somewhere, isn't there? Ah, here it is. Let's go with this one. No, 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 no. Copy the link. Okay. And then git clone. Can I do a uh, depth of 10 just to not pull the entire history down? Let's see how long that takes. Cool. Maybe not that long. All right. So once we get this down, we can take a look at some of the internals of geeks. All right, here we go. So geeks, uh, GNU build. So which one was it? GNU build system font. Okay. So geeks, uh, GNU build. Where's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Geeks build system. Now copy that could be something. So this could be just for copying files to see standard build procedure for simple packages don't, don't require much compilation, mostly just copying files around. This is implemented as an extension of the GNU build system. Okay. So how do I use it? Maybe if I just search, uh, what's it called? Copy build system. This is the best way to figure out how to do things in geeks. A lot of times just like search the geeks repo for other uses. And then you can typically see what uh, people are using a particular build system for and how they how they invoke it. All right, so there's some kind of mind test mods. Nah, QT. Uh, browser extensions, build system, copy, build system. All right, cool. So maybe all you gotta do is just use it like that. Let me see what this is doing. URI, get reference, URL, homepage. Oh, cool. I think they've simplified this a lot, which is great. Let's see, commit version. So we'll just stick with uh, the copy build system for now. We'll go back to rational. We'll drop this in right here. And then I'm gonna go back up to this font and change that to copy. Home page. Well, we need to uh, switch some of these things around actually. So let's get rid of this first. HTTPS github.com slash system crafters slash uh, rational emacs. Now, let me just copy this as well over here. Um, so they changed the way this looks now, right? Let me go and look at this other one. URI, get reference, URL, homepage. Where is that URL coming from? So let's see. I'm just gonna stick with some very simple stuff right now. Rational Emacs, rational Emacs. I mean, obviously this needs to be explained better, but I'm not that worried about it right now. And I think, what do we have for the, um, the GPL? Oh, it's MIT, okay, even better. I need to go to the Geeks Licenses folder as well. So Geeks Licenses, uh, MIT, Expat it's called, okay. And we're gonna go back into Rational. We're gonna put Expat here just to have the right license. Not super important, but you know, not bad to have. Okay, so it was in the browser extensions. So commit version. Uh, is this, this is a the package definition, but I don't know exactly how this, uh, so that makes sense, but commit version doesn't make sense because there's no, oh, okay. So it's the commit of the particular version. Gotcha. All right. And uh, get reference. That's probably going to get a lot of results here. Actually, let's take a look at this. Uh, commit, commit. Okay. So maybe I'll just stick with uh, origin, URI, string of pen. I'll just stick with the old model for now.
So it's URI. I think, um, so URI get reference. Okay. Ah, okay, I, I think this is what we're gonna do here. Get reference. We've got the repo path. We need to say that's a URL. We're gonna have some fun doing, dealing with some syntax errors I can already foresee. Get rid of these. And then um, commit. We're gonna use a specific commit hash on this repo, just the latest one. So I'm just gonna copy this whole commit hash. All right. So that should deal with the thing here. All right, so we got the copy build system. We got all of our metadata set up correctly. So let's try to build it. Um, we'll go into the console, geeks build, and we're gonna use dash L. Dash L is actually gonna allow us to uh, pass in another path um, to add into our geeks configuration sort of module set because Everything that you pull in as a channel in Geeks is basically a folder containing Guile Scheme modules. So right here, this is actually a Guile Scheme module. And if we add this folder to our uh, load path, we could have Geeks find the stuff that's defined inside here. So this is what I'm gonna try to do. Hopefully this works without a whole lot of headache. We may have to go with another approach if it, uh, if it gives us trouble. Okay, so um, projects. Um, code slash rational geek slash oh that's it right and then rational emacs let's see what happens here did you forget how to use modules foam uh ah, okay it doesn't like the fact that home.scm is empty let me copy this over to home.scm i'm not really using anything yet let's just start with that and see if it makes it happy. Okay, Rational Emacs unknown package. Hi, Johan. Failed to load home. No code for module home. Module name Rational Geeks does not match uh, file name home.scm. Well, I'm not really looking for that, am I? Ah, uh, is that what you, okay. You don't like that, do you? Okay, that's fine. So I need to just change my, uh, well, okay. Let's do this, how about that? So, um, go into Rational Geeks. Make dear Rational. Let's go, let's kill this home to SCM file, kill the Rational to SCM file. We're gonna change things around a little bit. So I'm gonna move home to SCM into Rational. And then I'm gonna move packages into rational. I'm gonna go into rational packages and I'm gonna move rational.scm to emacs.scm, okay? So now we're gonna reopen these things. Okay, so that makes that better. Um, we're gonna change the module name because Guile Scheme wants to see the um, module name structure be the same as the folder structure that is in the load path. So that's the reason why it's complaining about some packages not having things in the right place. So this is gonna be rational home. Um, yeah, that's good enough for now. Probably doesn't even need to be a module. In fact, we could just have uh, use module statements, but uh, let's leave it like that for now. I'll just do a simple define hello, uh, hello, just to make sure it doesn't complain too much. Or in fact, let's define uh, public. Just to see what happens. And then we're gonna pop back down here and run Geeks build one more time. There we go. Okay, rational emacs unknown package, at least that's working. So get reference unbound variable. Let me see where that's coming from. If I go back to this one, uh, get, get download. All right, that's what we need. 
That should help, I think. Ah, uh, get reference unbound variable. Still a problem. Let's see what else. Is it Geeks packages? No, it's in, it's in here. So um, define get reference. In fact, I think I need to put a what module is this in? This is in Geeks Git. So get references here also. Huh. Let's get download as reference there. What about that package? Uh, git geeks git download. Is git reference here? Okay, so it's exporting git reference. It's interesting that it's not actually working for me. Um oh, I put it in the wrong place, that's why. Of course. It needs to be here actually. So Get download, okay. Cool, that's uh, progress. Now here's where things get a little bit dirty with uh, Geek sometimes, hello to EBN. Sometimes the uh, error messages are not super helpful because it's just like a guile scheme stack. Let's see, store.scm, run with store. Um, okay, so. In unknown file, base name, get reference. It doesn't like something about what I did here. So let me double check. Oh, hold on. Method URL fetch. I think that's the problem. Uh, let's go back to browser extensions. It's, it needs to be git fetch. Okay. File name, git file name. That I'm not sure about. All right, so let's do uh, git fetch. Okay, great. I think this is uh, what I expect. So um, there's another little sneaky thing you can do. So whenever you have a git, uh, sorry, a geeks package definition, it expects you to have a, uh, a hash for the package contents so that it can validate that the things that got cloned down from a remote repo, repo are actually what's expected by this package definition. And I just left this old hash from the, the package I started editing from because I knew that it was going to give me this error whenever I finally got to um, this step. So now I'm just going to paste in the hash that Geeks told me. So it expected hash, the one that I had before, and an actual hash is this next one. So I just let Geeks tell me the right thing, and I'm just going to put it in. Uh, maybe not the safest way to make packages, but it's definitely a cheap way to get it done. All right, so let me run this build one more time. Hopefully it'll work this time, but I'm not sure. Cool, successfully built. So let me check out the folder here and see what's in there. Awesome. Okay, so it has all the stuff from the rational Emacs repo, even the init.el file, etc. So everything is there. That's great. So we're not going to do any post processing to the contents of the repo, like, you know, pre compilation of all the EL files or whatever. Uh, we can deal with that another time. For now, we just want to see if we can get this to work. All right. So we got this package definition. That's great. So the next step is to try to write a home service that will. Um, allow us to set up the rational Emacs configuration into the right uh, folder location. So I'll have to go back into my own uh, config and steal some stuff that I did from there. So in the home services. So there's a file service that you can use to place files in some particular location. And I think that if I just pull in the um, well, I hope it will let me link a directory. If it doesn't, we may have problems here because obviously I can't go and just try to like, you know, recursively pull in all the files of a repo. I guess I may have to if, if there's uh, no other solution, but there's some recursive T that I had here. I don't know if that helps. So, um, let me copy this home desktop file service 
and I'm gonna go back to, uh, let's see, emacs.scm. Let's go into another folder, um, home-services. I wonder if that's the right naming convention. What's Geeks use these days for um, for its home services? Let's see, uh, GNU Home Services. Okay, cool. So that actually makes more sense to me. We go back in here, we can say rational slash home slash services slash, um, well, uh, rational dash emacs dot SEM. I don't know, maybe not the best thing to do, but whatever is fine. Um, we also need to define the module for this file. So if I go back and steal, what was it? Emacs dot SEM. Hey, Peter. I'll take this, put it into the rational emacs file, rational emacs file, uh, rational home services, rational dash emacs. Okay. So, um, that's our starting point. And so rational emacs file service. So there's a, we're just going to start off with trying to get the, um, emacs config in the right place. I hope this works. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to. See, is that, oh, I think I deleted too many things and it didn't like it. Lispy, it makes me have to be very careful with what I'm doing. Okay, so get rid of that. And I think we're good here. So if I change this to .emacs.d, and then um, it's not a local file that we want, it's actually a package reference. And I'm not sure exactly how to do that. If this is a G expression, in theory, I could just pull in a package reference here and it should be able to pull the, um, the path, the installation path. So what I'm hoping is if I just put in a link to um, the package, rational emacs, we're gonna find out if this works. It may not work at all. So let's uh, also require the flow to Emmanuel and Mon. Um, okay, so, whoa. Scroll, for, I don't know why it's scrolling like that. Okay, so rational uh, packages Emacs. So we just wanna pull in that rational Emacs package. All right. Let me also double check the documentation. So um, geeks home configuration, I think that's what it's called. Home configuration, all right. Declaring the home environment, home services. I believe home service is what we wanna look for. So the file service. Hey Jeff, that's okay, glad to see you. Also, by the way, uh, Jeff put out a really nice uh, blog post about uh, Rational Emacs after the stream last week, and I forgot to, to link that in the in the show notes. Let me do that, actually. Let's see. Jeff Bowman blog Rational Emacs. This is going to work. Boom. There we go. That's exa No, that's not even the post I wanted. That's an, an earlier one. Here. That's, that's the one. Here we go. So let me just put that into the slides here. So once, once the stream's done, you'll be able to see that in the show notes. All right, so uh, what I was looking for is essential home service, services. I hope that the file service is in here. What was it called? Ah. file like object string value g expression file like object this is not exactly for what i'm looking for but it's something else um maybe i'll have to go to the index uh what was it called if i go to desktop files service okay so service extension home desktop no home file service type okay that's what it is so home files, no, is there a programming index?
Never mind. Home. I'll just go back to that. That's the new redshift service. Um, must be in another part of the docks. I get lost in the home config docks sometimes. Declaring the home environment, is that what it is? No. Can't be configuring the shell either. I swear there's something in the docks for this. Home bash service type. Okay, that's in the shells part. No, 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 no. Never mind. Let's just go look for a home files service type. Not in this repo. Let's go into the... No. Okay. SSH. Let me check this out. Open SSH configuration files. Um, open SSH configuration files. Okay. File join authorized keys. Okay, so we're just setting up some variables here. Config plain file. I hope that this works because I haven't seen an example yet that might. All right, so similar to et cetera service type, but it doesn't extend home activation because the deploy mechanism for config files is pluggable, yada, yada, yada. It's the right one. Okay. Files, service type, there we go. So no docs on this one, apparently. Extensions, uh, service extension, home service type, files, entry, files, entry, files. Uh, return an entry for the file, geeks home slash files, directory containing files. Files to files, directory, files, okay. files to files directory yeah I don't really see much there that makes sense to me some of this stuff is a little bit harder to digest the, the lower you get down into the layers of geeks and this is why I haven't made a video on geeks home yet because I, there's a lot that needs to be digested before you can really explain how to write your own home service which is kind of necessary at this point because there aren't a whole lot of them um, in the geeks repository yet there's a lot in the rde channel but there's not in the main geeks repository yet string of pin files directory slash file path um map oh interesting xdg configuration files cons string of pin files directory file path rest so xdg configuration files just look for that too because there's different ways to do all this stuff xdg data files all right so files service type Okay, so um, it's, they say it's like etc. service type. So how about we look for that in the index? Um, concept index, etc. cert, wow, it's not even there. Hmm. So define etc. service type. Yeah, no docs on this one. Yeah, it looks exactly like it, actually. 
files to etc directory. All right. So let's uh, stop wasting time here and just go back to look at this again. So let me uh, go into my desktop thing and a uh, home desktop service type. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to call this rational Emacs home service type. Call it rational Emacs home. I don't know if that's the right way to call these things. Let's actually check in in here. So there's the XDG. Uh, okay, home XDG configuration. Let's let's just use a similar naming convention. So home rational Emacs. And then uh, we're going to move this around here as well. Home rational Emacs service type. Don't really like the naming convention, but I want to be consistent. So things look uh, correct. All right, so service extension, uh, we don't need the profile service. We don't need the shepherd service yet, maybe. Um, but we do need the file service type. So I'm gonna just pull this up here. And then um, home rational Emacs file service. This is gonna be the home rational Emacs file service. All right, so I don't know if this is gonna work, but We'll find out. There may be another function I need to use to pull the uh, installation path for a given package, but for now, we'll try this. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I use, this may not work, use geeks home container. Actually, maybe I should do this in a vterm. So vterm, because I'm gonna go into an actual shell environment. I'll close that, I'll pull vterm in here. Okay, so geeks. Uh, home container dash L. I need to set the load path to be projects, code, rational, geeks. And then I um, also need to pull in the home config file that I want to use. Home uh, projects, code, rational, geeks. Um, what was it called? Hello. The rational slash home dot SEM. Okay. Uh, probably need to change that. So I'm just going to run this because uh, I need to go and change that file home.scm. Let's delete that file and then reopen it. We're, we need to move it first though. Let's go into the rational folder, uh, move home.scm to home-config.scm. Okay. And we're going to open it back up. All right. Now, I'm gonna go into my own configuration, into my system config for a system, let's say this system phantom. Uh, home configs are defined with this home environment form. So I'm gonna pull that out, go back into home config and drop that right here. I'll just delete this line we don't need anymore. We also need the necessary um, modules to pull in the home stuff we need, as well as the module that we defined, which is the um, rational home services. Let's also do this uh, home config. Rational home services, uh, rational Emacs. I wanna move this around, but um, these use module statements don't work very well with Lispy that I've seen. All right, whoa, no thanks. All right, so that should be good enough. Um, we don't need packages. However, we do need a service that could pull in the necessary package. So let me let me take a look at what I did in desktop SCM because I do pull in packages here. Was it the profile service? Yeah, okay, that pulls in the list of packages we want to install. So let me pull this out. Let's go back into um, the rational emacs.sem. Hey, F Society. Uh, F Society asks, uh, have you ever tried NixOS? And if you did, why do you prefer Geeks? I tried Nix a very, very long time ago. I've even got a blog post on my uh, 
personal website from 2014 when I tried Nix. I just like Geeks better because it's, you know, GNU and it's also uh, using Scheme instead of Nix's own little custom language for uh, defining system config. However, they're basically the same idea and a lot of the, you can do a lot of the same things with them. So, you know, if you prefer having more packages available by default um, and other things that you might need, then maybe Nix is better. But for me, I, I prefer Geeks. All right, so in this file, I want to pull in, uh, let's see, home, rational, Emacs profile service. And really, we're just going to pull in the rational Emacs package here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the rest of this. Oh, and we do want uh, Emacs as well. So what's the current Emacs? Is it 28.1? Come on, let's load Emacs. There we go. Yeah, 20.1. So we're just going to pull in Emacs, just plain old Emacs. I'm not going to bother with native comp because it might start compiling stuff here. But there's a way to customize which Emacs gets loaded for this. And that's something we can look into at some point soon. F Society says, I'm deeply into Nix, but I'm not a System D fan, so I'm thinking of switching to Geeks. Honestly, I mean, how often do you really think about your, your service uh, or init system, you know? Personally, that's not a reason I would choose one distro over the other, but, uh, you know, teach their own. All right, so uh, Emacs, Rational Emacs, we're all good with that. I still need to add this service type as well. So uh, profile service. And I think um, here... Profile service, let's see. Profile service. That's all, right? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna put this in uh, this list of extensions. I'm not really gonna explain what service extensions are at the moment because it's kind of, it's, it's really interesting, but it's also kind of uh, confusing at first. So let's just uh, continue trying to make this work. All right, so home rational Emacs profile service, okay. That should be enough for the service type. If I go back into home config, um, and let me check my own, let's see, services, common home services. If I go to common.sem, it's just a list, right? Okay. So service. Hello to microwave prints. Love your videos on YouTube. Nice to finally catch a stream while live. Yeah, great to have you. Thanks for thanks for joining. As society says, in my experience, systemd is a bit buggy, slow on my main PC, but not on others. Yeah, well, if it's if it's buggy and slow, then definitely that's a reason to try something else. However, I can't say that Shepard is necessarily better, um, because it's you know, it can be slow too. A lot of things in Geeks can be slow. In fact, if you want things to be fast, I would, I wouldn't use Geeks because Geeks itself. Can take a long time to chew on system configurations but that's not a downside in my opinion uh the stability of the system you know is, is pretty good so i don't really update very frequently okay so i have a list and a service all right so let's just do that okay um back in home config this is going to be a list and i'm going to drop in uh this rational emx service type and we're just gonna throw this down into the list there. That should be enough. So let's try this again. We're gonna use um, Geek's home container to try to run this home configuration. All right, cool. Unbound variable. And uh, it doesn't tell us which file it's an unbound, unbound variable in, but I think the reason why is because I'm not defining something as public. So let me go check that out. Hello to Muhammad. All right, so yeah, we're not defining this public. This needs to be defined public so that it goes outside of the module. Try this again. All right, um, rational Emacs service type unbound variable. So it's not this file. It must be where it gets used. So it has to be in this home home config. Rational home services, rational Emacs. Is that right? Rational home services, rational Emacs. I'm pulling it in. Let's double check how I set my stuff up also. 
Do I have to be explicit about export? Maybe. Let's uh, let's just try that real quick. I'll go into this module definition, change this to rational Emacs. <laughs> All right, cool. And I don't really need to define public that anymore. So let's take that out, run it again. Still the same problem. Uh, Giornati says, I get that Geeks and NixOS is about reproducible builds configs, but uh, how do you manage security updates when you want a higher version different from the one uh, chosen in your config? Uh, Geeks gives you ways to deal with that. Uh, one of them is called inferiors, where you can take a particular package and um, change which commit which commit or version that the package uses. So you have total control over pulling in uh, versions of software that aren't actually what's in the Geeks repo. So you can do that. So look up uh, Geeks in Geeks inferiors. It's a little bit weird, I think. Um, I haven't really used it before, but I know that you can do this. And you can also um, derive from a package and make your own package and, and change this stuff. So there's there's a couple of different ways to do it, I think, if you want to do that. Hello to Patricio. Uh, and Patricio says, I love Geeks SD. Well, yeah, me too. I, I tried using... Geeks Home on Ubuntu 2004 this week, and it works pretty well, but there's some issues. And uh, once I work those issues out, I'm hoping to make an, uh, a video at some point about using Geeks Home on a foreign distribution, because sometimes it's necessary. Like if your work only supports one specific um, distribution of Linux like mine does, you might want to use Geeks, and uh, you can't use the whole Geek system, so you can at least use the Geeks Package Manager and Geeks Home to set up your uh, preferred configuration. So it's kind of nice to be able to do that, but there are pitfalls as well. Home Rational Emacs Service Type. Home Rational Emacs Service Type. Why is this not working? Home Rational Emacs Service Type. Rational Home Services, Rational Emacs. Rational Home Config, Use Module, Rational Home Services, Rational Emacs. All right, so sometimes it's useful to go into the REPL as well. All right, so Geeks REPL L, um, Projects, Code, Rational Geeks. Okay, so we might expose a problem here. Use Modules, Rational Home services, rational Emacs. Let's see what happens here. Service type, unbound variable. So uh, this is one thing I don't like about Geeks. Basically, if you have a syntax error or like an unresolved variable name inside of a module, sometimes you'll get unrelated errors whenever you start doing things with Geeks and you have to actually go in the REPL and import the modules you've been working on to see if any of them have syntax errors. I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I need to talk to some people who work on Geeks and see if maybe there's a more uh, strategic way to deal with this problem, but it is it can be a little bit annoying. Okay, so uh, service type unbound variable. Let's go into the desktop to SCM. I wonder if it's in these two i'll probably pull in geeks g expression as well so let's go back into um rational emacs to scm drop this in here we don't need those don't need that either we can put this down here we can take this out all right so now maybe it will work let's try this again i think i probably need to get out of the REPL before i do that okay that worked so now if I run this config, let's see what happens. Unbound variable Emacs. Okay, that makes sense. So I also need to pull in uh, GNU packages Emacs. Okay, it seems to be doing something. Maybe it works. Let's see. It's building a profile. Uh, Fade says, why doesn't it drop you to the debugger? Because you're running it on a um, 
well, I don't know. In your in the REPL, I don't know why it drop, doesn't drop to the debugger, but if you're just running the command line commands, I can understand why it wouldn't do that. Uh, Azer says, hey, Dave, I've been watching you for a few months now, and I wanted to know if you would do a video on setting up a GNU Geeks VM for those who want to try it. Um, I mean... Yeah, maybe maybe it's a good idea to do a video on that. I did a ins full installation video, but maybe I can skip some steps, you know. Okay, so we've got a shell in our container environment. Let's take a look at what's in here. Oh, nice. It actually may have worked. Check this out. ls.emacs.d. Cool. So, I wonder what happens if I run Emacs from here. Let's just see if I can run Emacs. Oh, it loaded it in the terminal mode. Why is that? Is it because display is uh, not set? Well, okay. So the good news is it actually did load Rational Emacs. And I'm pretty sure it's loading it from the right path. So let's see. If I were to use Control H, ah, uh, I should probably run this in an actual terminal. Let's let's get out of. No, I don't want to exit. At least now it doesn't kill my stream if I do that by accident. Control. X, C, no. B term, control X. V term, control C. Jeez, all right, so at least I got out of there. Um, why is it X? All right, come on, come on, hello. V term doesn't wanna play nice today. Um, echo display. Okay, is that why? Uh, EBN says, I'm pretty sure there's an official QMU image for geeks. Yes, that's true. There is one. So, uh, if I just set display, let's go back to the eShell. Echo display. If I just set it to colon zero, is that enough to make it run the right thing? Export uh, display equals colon zero. And then Emacs. Damn, it didn't work. I got to do this again. I don't think of any other reason why uh, Emacs would be l loading in terminal mode here. So Emacs dash dash help. Is there a way to force it to do? Probably missing something in the um, in the folder that is confusing it. No window, of course. No X resources. Ah, okay. So dash D. Emacs dash D zero. Display zero can't open. Can't be opened. Uh, okay. Interesting. So um. What are we missing in the environment? Something is missing that keeps it from uh, accessing the uh, the X session, which is pretty funny if you ask me. Do you even use an X server? Maybe you're running Wayland? No, I'm definitely not running Wayland. I'm ru I'm running uh, X right now. So there's there's literally nothing in here. Let me let's just talk about that, about that for a second. So um, since we use the home geeks home container command, it basically created a fake home environment here or a fake um, home folder. So there's nothing here except for just the stuff that comes from uh, geeks home doing stuff. So if I were to look at uh, dot config. Uh, okay, the Rational Emacs folder got created by Rational Emacs. That makes sense. Uh, cache. Probably nothing in there. What about the local folder? That's interesting. Share, var. Okay, there's some stuff in there. No big deal. Uh, try setting display and launching Emacs in the same command. That's a great idea. Let's try that. Um, let's see. Display equals colon zero uh, Emacs. Still not worky worky. Okay. It's very interesting. The good news is it actually is, oh, creating directory, read-only file system, home davidwheel.emacs.d slash elpo. That makes sense because um, 
the folder is supposed to be read only because it's in the GNU store. So any folder that you create in the, the GNU store, which is basically where all the packages and stuff get installed, is gonna be read only. So if we were to do this with Rational Emacs, anything that Rational Emacs does, it needs to create files somewhere. Like for instance, uh, install packages, it needs to put them somewhere else. Hey Benoit. So um, I think that uh, some changes may need to be made to Rational Emacs for this purpose, or the configuration file that gets generated by the Rational Home Service needs to uh, change the package output folder somehow. It's just very interesting to me that I can't actually get this to work in uh, in graphical mode. It's because I don't have any like uh, GTK packages in the profile. It, it has to be there, I think. All right, let's do this little song and dance again. Um, let's take a look at dot geeks home slash profile. All right, um, lib. Okay, so there's nothing in lib. Icons. I don't see GTK or anything. Uh, Fade says every .el file will want to write out a byte, byte compiled version. Yeah, I think there's a way to put those somewhere else. I hope. But if there's not, then that would be a problem. Let's see. What does Emacs say? Byte compile output. Let's see. Temp var root dir directory relative to which file names. What? No, 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 no. File names and error messages are written. That seems wrong. Well, that may be something to look into another time. By compile log file. I know the native comp stuff, uh, you can control that folder. Native comp, uh, let's see, target directory. Yeah, for the ELN files being compiled. Let's see, um, byte target, nah, targ, target. No, it's not there, okay. It's not the same naming convention. Anyway. Hello to uh, Monty Condon. So let's just keep moving, okay? Obviously, there's an issue with getting the graphical version of Emacs to run from inside this environment. However, in a real setup, like if I were to run Geeks Home with this configuration on my machine, I wouldn't have this problem. It's only because I'm running it in this little container environment that I'm having an issue with it. So. Uh, as is, this service would actually work for us if we were to try to use it right now, but I'm not gonna do that because it would just break my whole system or at least my user part of my system if I um, if I change anything or if I were to run it. Actually, I could roll it back, obviously. Okay, so the next thing we wanted to do, and we're making pretty good time, thankfully. I'm actually surprised it's, it's been this easy so far. Uh, does the container have X host access? Well, I don't know. Um, how do I figure that out? which X host. Okay, so there's a program called X host. So if I were to run that um, container again, let's see, I bet I don't have X host. Yeah, so I need, uh, I would need to install some stuff for that, which is probably the reason why, like maybe there's some programs and libraries that are not available where Emacs is just like, okay, I can't uh, do anything graphical right now. So what we wanted to do next is to see if we can um, come up with a configuration type. Xhost plus on the main, okay. And uh, with that configuration uh, object, we would be able to configure the Rational Emacs service. Um, I think I did that actually. I, I have that in my configuration to use Xhost to open up the permissions. At least I needed to do that for EXWM. So let me go back to my 
configuration stuff. Did I create a configuration object of any type? I did somewhere. I don't know which of my services I put it in. You disky? No. Interesting that I didn't do that. So let me think about where I can... Ah, yeah, okay. Let's look in the Geeks code. So if I go back to services right here. Ah, uh, okay. So where is the configuration object stuff to find? Configuration. XDG configuration files. Blah, 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 blah. Home services. Uh, okay, so the mcron service probably will have something. There we go. Home mcron configuration. So this is what a configuration object looks like. You basically define a record type for the configuration for a given service. Um, and this is just normal scheme code. And they all have their own um, fields. So for instance, the, uh, the the package to use, which we might use to configure the Emacs package to use for like, you know, Emacs versus Emacs native comp, uh, et cetera. And then home mcron configuration jobs, that would be another uh, struct, I think, or record type. Where is that to being defined? Oh. Home in mcron configuration jobs. Configuration pack. Oh, was it, what does this even mean? Mcron configuration uh, package. That's interesting. No record defined for that. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Fade says, if it was a permission problem, it would be written into the X error log on the master host. Yeah, I'm not going to bother looking at that right now, but I think um, probably would have even seen an error of some sort. So let, let's also look at, let's see, what else can we look at? Maybe SSH and see how the configuration here. Open SSH configuration. Boom, 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 right here. So configuration authorized keys, and where is that defined? Huh. I need to look up to find record type star for Guile, because there's something special about this. I get a feeling that it's maybe defining a type somehow with these fields. Really? All right, give me the Guile manual. No way. No way. Um, info. Not gonna be Guile library, it's gonna be the Guile manual itself, I would think. Guile reference, there we are. All right, so. Concept index record record overview historical records API make record type uh, record constructor blah blah um, apropos. Let's try this, uh, define record type star. Maybe that will work. Yeah, that's too broad of a search here. It needs to be inside this single uh, file, I think. Come on. Oh, come on. All right, so info. Info back. Okay, control zero, uh, control O. All right, so define record type. It's not in this one. Let's 
check out the Surfy 9. Define record type. Is there a star here? Okay, so at least I see like here employee name. So let's uh, check the syntax. Oh, that's just the accessor function. Fair enough. Okay. Jump the definition. Yeah. I don't know that that would work in this case. All right. So that's just an accessor function. That's cool. Hello to Piotr. Regarding X, I don't know how these containers work, but for Docker, you have to share the X socket. That's probably why. Is that actually in my home folder? Yeah, all the X authority, blah, blah, blah stuff is here. Uh, dot X. Well, um, probably because it can't access these, it, it just ignores it. Okay. So now that we figured that out, let me just, um, I'm just going to copy a record type definition. And are they pulling in surfy stuff here? Anything guile related? Maybe, oh, a surfy 35. I'm curious what that actually has in it. If I were to go um, back, there's surfy 35. Conditions. Uh, define record. No, nah, it doesn't have that, does it? Interesting that it has that. So, um, hmm. anyway, not worth really looking into further. So I want to go into my, uh, rational Emacs file again, and we're going to put a configuration here, the home rational Emacs configuration. Define record type star may be a geeks function. You were right. That's actually a good point. It might be there. Extends many guile functions. Yeah. Good point. We'll have to look into that at some point. In fact, maybe define record. No, it's not here. Nope. Okay. So, um, rational emacs, rational emacs. Gotta just rename all of the uh, constructor functions and the predicate function. Okay, take the open SSH off. It's in the guile info manual, is it? Okay, didn't didn't find it. So, what do we want to put in here? I mean, there's <clears throat> excuse me. There's two ways to look at this. One is. You can just let the user sort of um, put raw Emacs configuration directly into the configuration object. Or you can create a more structured configuration that, um, like for instance, saying which mo uh, rational Emacs modules should be required. I think. Maybe that goes a little bit too far. It's a little bit too structured for what we want to do here. So maybe having something more like just, you know, putting in a text string with configuration or potentially some um, S expressions that get converted to Emacs Lisp effectively. Let me think about this for a second. So if I were to just let's let's go with the most basic possible thing we could do, which is config. And that's the home rational, ah, uh, come on, rational Emacs configuration config. I know, terrible, right? Uh, file-like object. How are people dealing with this already, I wonder? Um, also, we have the early config. And then we'll sort of do the same thing here. Just grab the string and drop it right there. This is the early config. 
and this is another um, file like object. Okay. We don't want lists. I mean, supposed to be a file like object. Uh, what do I have for? Well, I don't have, I'm not using this, am I? SSH default. What about uh, mcron list of jobs package? I mean, that's kind of interesting to to do. What others? Um, there's also the bash service service. Default value, default value, blah, blah, blah. Where is the define record? Hmm. Home bash configuration. Oh, okay. So there's another macro uh, called define configuration. This is what I was expecting to see actually, and this is much easier to use. So define configuration, home bash configuration, um, and let's see, aliases, environment variables, uh, text config, list of file like file like object. Hey Alejandro, and uh, also to um, Monhoman. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Okay, so this is what we need to steal instead. This is obviously better. Hey Garjola, nice to see you. Garjola is here to uh, help me make sure my pronunciation is uh, is correct on everything. So um, back to the rational Emacs file. Let's uh, let's do away with the defined record type thing that we wasted all that time talking about. Um, package Emacs. Let's let's just do that because it's it's obviously easy to do it here now. Uh, Geeks defaults. Let's see. It's a boolean. Don't need that. Don't need the all this A-list stuff because it's for a different type of service. But we do want to steal the um, text config blocks. So this is going to be a config file. Let's call that. Whoa, early config file. We're going to have to do a little bit of little bit of work on this. Uh, which we added to bash profile used for executing users commands at start of login shell. I wonder if there's a way to use um, functions to make this easier. We'll see. So I'll take this part out. Um, documentation strings. I wonder if I can get by without this for now. Uh, the early config.el file. And also, we're going to have. The config file. Okay. So uh, this is back to home rational Emacs configuration. Cool. So now we have a configuration. We also need to export that configuration type. So if I just go here to whoop, to the uh, export list, did I? No. Didn't help myself. So home rational Emacs. Configuration. We'll do a little line break on this. Okay. Let's get rid of this. So now we have config file. We have early config file, and this config needs to be used to um, just determine which files get written out. So in this case, we can uh, add more uh, files to this list. Like so, so dot config slash rational dash emacs slash config dot el. <laughs> Garcholo says, I heard about Herbst Luft and I had to come, but I guess you know how to pronounce Geek's home. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that one. Gunn says, he almost got Herbst Luft right with the uh, U pronounced like hook. Uh, Garcholo says, by the way, I'm now exploring uh, HLWM, but also Qtile. Yeah, I haven't looked at Qtile at all, but. Uh, uh, Herbst Luft is doing pretty well for me right now. Okay, so I think we can just pull that, right? It's going to be the home rational emacs configuration. 
I need to hone the er away. Hi, Felipe. Nice to nice to see you. Glad you decided to join. Okay, so let me take a look at how the bash configuration uses this home bash configuration package. All right, there we are. So this would be home rational emacs configuration dash um uh what is it? Config file. Man, my brain is turning to mush apparently. Now I wonder if I have to do anything with these text config entries or if I can just pass that right in and it just gets uh, swallowed up into a final file. Actually, why don't I just look at what the bash config did? So um, I'm gonna look at the um, bash-profile section, serialized field. Hmm, interesting. Uh, bash extensions, match original config. Okay, so this is like using a match to rip out all the contents. Okay. Bash profile, append bash profile, append map. Uh, okay. This is like a home bash extensions. What does this do? Oh, a pin map, okay. Interesting. This probably isn't needed for me. At least um, extensions are a whole other ball game that we're not going to get into right now. So let me just try to find uh, bash uh, configuration dash bash dash profile configuration. Come on, did I get that right? Configuration dash bash. What's happening? Bash dash profile. This is in what? Home bash configuration dash bat mm. what's up with this german romanticism not romanticism we're talking about a particular uh window manager okay so it doesn't get used directly which is very interesting to me but apparently yeah that can't be right Serialized field, bash profile, bash profile, text config. All right, so what's serialized field do? All right, serialized configurations, uh, config, filter fields field. What the hell, man? Add bash configuration. Okay, service extension, home files type, add bash configuration. Very interesting implementation here. File if not empty. Uh, mixed text file, okay. So I need to check that one as well. Um, Uh-oh. Apparently uh, internet issues are happening again. That's fun. If the stream dies out, let me know. Seems to have gone back. Okay. I want to go to mixed. All right. So we're not getting the API reference here, obviously. Programming interface, package modules. All right, let's uh, take a look in mixed text file. All 
All right, so the documentation here, uh, mixed text file, turn an object representing store file, something containing text, text is a sequence of strings and file like objects. Great. So I think that's what I want ultimately. So mixed text file in here. Um, it would be like this. I hope this works. Let me drop this down one line. Um, config.el. And then rational emacs config from geeks home. Now, I'm not sure exactly how I can roll those in unless I use like apply or something. Var text is a sequence of strings and file like file like objects. Declarative counterpart of code text dash file. Uh, let's see. What is text dash file star? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yes, Alejandro. I'm basically ripping off stuff from the bash library as a way to figure out how to deal with this correctly or how to uh, write this configuration correctly. This is probably not going to work, um, but we're going to start with it just to see what happens. Why did I do that? Okay. All right. So um, mixed text file config.el. Uh, yeah, that's good. And we need to pass the right configuration type in, I think. So default value. Let's go back to shells default value. Uh, okay, so we just give it a blank um, configuration object. That's cool. So this is going to be a home rational Emacs configuration. Uh, let's see. Um, the home service to configure rational Emacs. And for the uh, the profile, we can actually change this now. We can say uh, home rational Emacs configuration package config instead of Emacs. And that would make that uh, overridable, which is kind of cool. Um, Emacs dash package. And then um, package. The uh, rational Emacs package to use. So like if you want to customize the, the original rational Emacs package, then you could do that. So that's another thing that really needs to happen in these kinds of configurations. Home rational Emacs uh, configuration. Um, this Emacs package, and this would just be package. Delete the, those two, and then put config in, and then use that to move it around. Okay. Cool. So those two things should work now in theory. Uh, what we can do is go into the uh, home config.scm file. Order doesn't matter. It's just sort of a matter of, you know, personal preference in this in this case let me look at my uh, phantom config and see how I passed in uh, config objects or maybe that would be the desktop SCM file variables I know I did that somewhere it's in the common file I think it is Home services, uh, systems, common. All right, here it is. Okay, so it's the service and then the configuration object right after that. Cool. So this is what I'll do. I'll go into this uh, home config file. And for this, I will say home rational emacs configuration. 
um, config file. Or maybe I can do something a little bit more interesting. How about this? So there is a like a plain text plain file, okay? Wonder if I can just use a string. If I have to use that, we'll we'll see. If it complains, I'll I'll change it. But um, let's say require rational uh, UI, okay? We're just gonna put this in and hope that it works. So let's run the config again. Something's gonna break. Okay, did you forget? Of course, uh, something needs to be lo loaded up in the REPL to double check it. So let's uh, load in the rational Emacs module. Okay, can define configuration unbound variable. I need to figure out which module that's in. It's gonna be in ah, Geeks Home Services Utils. That sounds pretty likely. If I go back into the rational Emacs.scm, drop it in right here. Then uh, in theory, if we reopen the REPL and then re-eval that module. Okay, whoa. Okay, so it's not there. Let's go into geeks slash geeks slash home. No, where are we? It's a GNU. Ah, yeah, GNU home services utils define configuration. So it's not in this file. Define configuration. Where's that coming from? Ah, it's probably somewhere else. No. New services configuration? Could be. Okay, let's try that. Put this right here. Uh, maybe get rid of that one. Try the REPL again. Uh, package question mark unbound variable. Okay. Let's let's put that uh, utils back in maybe. Also, package question mark. Just trying to figure out where that is uh, coming from. Okay, chicken package, EMS package. Where are you? Can I say like define? Great. Sorry, Alejandro. I know it's confusing because Geeks Home Service authoring is, is slightly confusing. And also, you know, coding for Geeks is also slightly confusing. Uh, package question mark. Did I try that already? Let me just do this one more time. No, still not working. Damn, where is that defined? Package question mark. Where am I using that? Home, let's see, package. What the hell? Garzola asks, uh, are you planning to make more videos on uh, Herb Sleuft Window Manager? How's your workflow now with respect to tab bar, workspace, etc.? Yeah, I replicated a lot of what I was doing. Um, with EXWM and tab bar mode, etc., with uh, Herbst Luft. And I'm gonna make like sort of like an end to end video on how to use and configure it. I don't know how long it's gonna take because I kind of wanna do like a full video that requires, that only requires you watch that video, which may be overly ambitious and it might be three hours long, but that's sort of the point. So, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're, we're gonna see about that. It won't happen in the very near future, but it will happen at some point this year, I think. But I do like that window manager, I think it's really nice. Okay. Um, we're looking for wherever this uh, package question mark is being used. And honestly, um, oh, it must be here. Define configuration must be turning that into a, uh, a predicate. It's gotta be. So 
Um, define configuration is being, let's see, GNU services, geeks, GNU services, configuration, uh, define configuration. So where is the question mark coming from? We write Herbsluf client in scheme or mesh. Uh, well, we definitely write an interface to uh, Herbsluf client. We did that with Emacs Lisp. Uh, I think that's probably the best way to do it, but I have considered doing something for Geeks Home, uh, at least with Guile. Package. Okay, package question mark. Now, where is package question mark supposed to come from? Geeks packages? Geeks utils? Package. I have no idea where this would come from. Let's check uh, Geeks. Ah, there it is. Okay, this is Geeks Packages. Let's go back into this one. Drop it right there. Wow, that's not what I wanted. Let's do this, Geeks Packages. Okay, so that should take care of that issue. Let's see if anything else shows up. All right, cool, that gets loaded. So let's uh, try to run the config one more time. And let's see what happens. Okay, it seems to be putting something together. I don't know if it's going to do the right thing. Let's take a look at the uh, .config rational emacs folder. There is a config.el file there. What's in there? Uh, cat. Hey, I think it actually worked. But uh, the problem is we need some new lines in between each of those lines. So um, probably a good idea to map over those and join the string together or... Just insert a new line between everything. I don't know if that's the right way to, to go about that, but certainly um, the lack of new lines could be a problem. What if I go to uh, my home config and let me do like another require, require uh, rational editing and then require rational evil. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm kind of curious about how this is gonna go. Let's exit out of here. Run the container config again, and then we're just gonna run Emacs inside of it and see what happens. All right, so Emacs. All right, so we got a little error here. Uh, oh, the same one from before. It, this may prevent us from doing anything. Uh, I can set that package path somewhere else. So what if I do that? Um, I could... I could generate that. So one l nice little benefit here is that um, in the service, rationalemacs.scm, I can generate little snippets here. Um, like for instance, what I want is, um, what is it called? Make directory. And that's a Boolean. Okay, so make directory. Hmm. It's not perfect, is it? You start doing this. You would need to delete. Like if it, if a program can create a directory like this. Uh, we're going to have to live with it, I think. All right, let's just do this real quick. I, I will I will finish the sentence I started saying in just a moment. Let's just get it going first. So dot config, uh, sorry, no, dot cache slash emacs slash uh, elpa. That could be configurable too, actually. Uh, so we can make directory t, and then also. Um, what is it? Packages, uh, package, uh, directory? No. Package user dear. Original value cache emacs elpa. That can't be right, can it? 
it's kind of the ideal folder path. F Society says, uh, which file system are you using? I'm just using X4. I don't really uh, do anything special with that because it doesn't matter to me. XDG Cache Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I do want it there. Is that the right thing? Let me go Let's see. Do I have like a web project in here somewhere? Boom, 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 boom. No, I don't. Sites, Flux Harmonic. I think that one has it. Let's see. Ah, okay. Package user dear. Fine. So um, we're going to go back in here. We're going to set that variable. So set Q. Okay. I can actually do that here too. So define um, Emacs package dear, or we could call it uh, package user dear, right? Package user dear. If I type it correctly. And then um, I can put this path here. This at least opens the door to having this be is there like a format. I think there's like format T and then uh, package user dear to have this uh, parameterize in the config object. Was it like, let's see, um, guile scheme format. Formatted output. I need to have ice nine format pulled in, huh? That's fine. So, um, okay, cool. That's great. So this needs to be a hash T because that's true in scheme. Then I need to go up here and pull in the ice nine format package. So that's ice nine without any Okay, there's a dash in here. Okay, so now I can go back here and do the same thing for this next line, format uh, hash T, and then drop in this little squiggly S, and uh, package user dear, whoops. Okay, we also need the new line back in the scheme of things. What the hell? There we go. Okay, that should do the trick. And now I, I hope this will make it so that uh, it stops complaining at me about the packages not being installable in the folder. So let's exit out of here. Let's run it again. Again, come on. Uh, this is the problem. I got a little syntax issue here. Yeah, I, I love it when this happens. Great. I think that solves it. Oh, no. Still got a... Ah! Okay. Let's try that now. Garzola says, I, I too was spoiled by the nice EXWM workflow and any other thing I try doesn't stick. Not even Stump WM that I used for five years before. Yeah, I had the same problem, uh, especially with Stump. Like, it just seemed too comfortable. How do you escape quotation marks? Let's see. Um, escape? Oh, is it like the the... the Guile escape quotation mark. Uh, Garzola says, not having uh, meta X everywhere is one thing, and global tab bar is also great as a panel where I can put Emacs info. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice for that, indeed. Um, quotation mark, quotation mark. Yeah, that's not helping, is it? Format output. Um, can I escape a double quote in a, in a verbatim string literal? I don't even know which language it's for.
I'm not sure what the um, scheme string escaping. Well, let's just look at the MIT scheme manual. Maybe it's good enough. Slash, right? Why? Oh, format is printing it because I'm using T. Right. I have a syntax issue right here. All right. So maybe that is the problem. Let's give it a shot. Cool. All right. Let's uh, do a little cat on config slash rational slash config dot el uh that looks no this is totally jacked up what is the deal with that hey anders ah uh, let's see we're trying to uh bang our heads against some uh scheme coding here we're almost there, though. I mean, I think that we're sort of at a point where it proves that this works. It's just I want to make this this part. I want to see that the configuration that we put in here actually does light up. So we need to make sure that this um, quotation mark issue gets taken care of. I have no idea why it has two quotes. Let's try running Emacs anyway and see what happens. Uh, I didn't do that. Oh, this probably needs to be an early config. That's what the deal is here. Okay, so um, let's use let's use this for early config. In fact, so that's config, and we're gonna take out uh, these two lines. Okay, and this is gonna be early config. We need early config because this is stuff that comes before, like the package initial package system initialization and whatnot. Early config from Geeks Home. We're gonna put this stuff in. Um, and then the early config file, right? And we also need to change this to be uh, early-config.el. Let's get out of this session, get out of that shell and run it again and see if it works. I think those double quotes are going to be a problem. Must have a syntax error somewhere. I can uh, check out the build log. So if I were to... Wow, that's not what I was trying to get. Where is the log? The log is here. Um, we're going to edit that file. Unexpected syntax in form. Which one? I wonder if um, that empty list that gets used by default is the problem. Let me try. I go into home config and I say that the early config file is a plain string that has nothing in it. Does it do anything? Seems so. Okay. So if I were to cat uh, config rational emacs early config.el, I could see that those things are in there. Let's run emacs and it's going to fail because symbols value as variable is void and that's because of the double quote issue so the uh whoops um what am i doing here what if you take away the format um well yeah if i take away the take away the format maybe mm. come on now v term and evil are not playing together well today Let's see. Oh, it, do I need to like, okay. 
That's the problem, I think. I need to like multi slash this. Don't I? Okay, let's 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 try something. Um Gal. Use modules uh ice nine format. Format T uh thing slash quote what Okay, so that works just fine. Makes me wonder whether some other level of uh, formatting is going on here. Let, let's try this. I don't know if that's going to help. That may just make things worse. Okay, so cat, config, rational, early. Uh, what am I looking at? Oh, okay. Ha ha ha, okay, all right, all right, I see what's happening here. So um, I think I'm using the wrong format syntax. I'll tell you why. Is it cap? Whoa, is it capital S? Or... Object output. Okay, I don't want object output. I want string output. Object output in scheme puts quotes around strings. That's the reason why it has that. Uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Sub format, no parameters. New line. Force output. Come on. There's got to be a, a, a format character for that. I mean, alternatively, I can use, um, let's see. Is just append, maybe? Guile. Or concat. Oops. Guile. Oh, get out. Guile, concat. One, two, three. String append is the name in scheme. So was it string dash append? Yeah, okay. So let's not use format. I mean, well, let, let me just one last little double check. Okay, I think it's it's uh, A. It's not S. Let's get rid of those. A and A. I think A gives you the display output, which doesn't have quotes. So let's try that one last time here. Almost out of time. All right, so cat, uh, config, rational, early. Boom, that fixes the problem. This syntax looks okay. So now we're going to run Emacs. And what are you unhappy about now? Oh, package all the icons is unavailable. Why? It's loading what I asked it to load. But why is it not? Um... Oh, you know what? I'll bet money that the problem is that uh, the NSS certs Package is not available and Git is not available. No, no, it can't be Git. Let's see, let's see. So meta X, um, package install, evil. Oh, nope, evil. Mode, what? All right, let's try something else here. Uh, what is it? Uh, control G. Okay. So, um, send meta X is terrible. We have to do this. So, um, package install. Ah, no. Pack. 
package refresh contents. Fail to download nine GNU archive. Something is up. Send control uh, X B messages. All right. Fail to download everything. I'm guessing it's because it, it doesn't have uh, certificates. That's just my little magic guess. So uh, what we're, what we're going to do just to quickly verify that that's true is in the profile service, I'm going to put in this uh, NSS certs package. And if I look that up, uh, NSS certs, that is in GNU packages certs. So I'm going to go into this line and then just drop in uh, certs. This is not the right place to do this, but it's going to just, you know, get that in our um, profile at least. Hey, Eric. Yeah, it's going good, actually. I think we're uh, making progress here. All right, Emacs. Uh, still problems. All the icons are unavailable. Interesting. I wonder how feasible it is to actually do what I'm trying to do here. Uh, let's see. Meta X, E shell. Let's do an E shell inside this. That not work because of the restrictions. That's fantastic. I don't need E shell. Let's uh, just get out of Emacs. Whoops. Can I just. All right, so what am I looking for? LSAL.cache, ELPA, oh, nothing's in there. Why don't I run it with debug init? Well, let's try it. Yikes. Okay, so that was helpful. Thanks, uh, Alejandro. Name or service not known? Well, let's uh, let's back out for a second. Ping, uh, google.com. Okay. Well, obviously that's not going to work either. I wonder what Emacs needs, but you know, it's not worth trying to figure that out right now because a normal system would have all that stuff in this, this whole container thing is what's causing our, us the, the biggest problems. So what I will say is that what we were able to accomplish today does work at least to a preliminary enough stage that it can be built on. Yeah, I've got NSS certs installed and it didn't help. Um, so uh, where, would, where would we go from here? Uh, if I were to go back and look at this home config, I mean, this was, is basically all you need at least initially, to uh, set up Rational Emacs in a Geek's Home system because it can pull down Rational Emacs. Now, Rational Emacs may need, may need some additional configuration work done or maybe the service needs some additional work done to guard against any possible problems with the configuration coming from the, the, uh, the GNU store directory, which is all read-only. But I think that if a goal of rational emacs is that it should be usable with geeks home then we would do the work necessary to uh, make sure that it works the right way so um kind of interesting to see this working i do want to continue working on this i've got some thoughts on how we might you know have like a channel for for geeks uh, a geeks channel for system crafters um, maybe with the eventual goal of building something bigger out of it, like maybe a custom distribution of geeks or something. So I might try to get this checked in somewhere, but it's going to be really, really basic and early. So I don't know if it's going to be usable for people, but if people are interested in contributing, let me know. Cause, um, uh, I'm, I want to learn geeks home service creation better so that we can start doing some more interesting things with it. Cause you know, configuring window managers or configuring um, any program that you need really would be useful, but it would be even better if we could push some of these home services back to the actual geeks repository, you know, have it be useful for everyone. So uh, Alejandro says crafted OS. Um, yeah, I was thinking like, you know, 
Crafter OS, potentially. I don't know if that's something people would be interested as a name. Crafted OS also could be cool. And I, you know, I like uh, Jeff's suggestion for Crafted Emacs as an alternative to uh, Rational Emacs. So Crafted Emacs could be a name that we might go with. Eric says, uh, maybe more fitting on the GitHub, but I uh, definitely think we should split some of the modules up and maybe allow for choosing between different packages. So instead of UI, have mode line. Yeah, we need to make things more granular. Uh, we were talking about that last week, for sure. Uh, so anyway, thanks for joining me on this little experiment. I'm pretty happy with the outcome. I got a little bit further than I thought I would. Um, so uh, we'll continue to build on this in the future. Maybe not on stream, but definitely as a project. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for, for joining me today. Um, check the show notes afterward. I'll put all these files in the show notes. The link is in, this, in the description if you want to check a, take a look at these. And once I finally get everything into a repository somewhere in a more usable state, uh, I'll let you know about it. Um, probably won't have a video next week because I'm dealing with a lot, a lot of house move stuff in the next week. If I manage to get one done, though, I'll let you know. But uh, otherwise, I'll see you next Friday for the first stream. And uh, as always, uh, happy hacking. We'll see you.